Hello mathematicians, how are you doing today? Today we're going to dive into another lesson that involves number theory and logic. Please find your skeleton notes on the quotient remainder theorem, modular arithmetic, and proof by cases. To be most successful, you'll need those notes as well as a pencil or a pen, colored pens, and a calculator. So we'll begin review. We know that this orange D divides the blue N is red D divides N. We know that that is only true if D is a factor of N. Likewise, that means N is a multiple of D. N is a multiple of D means that N can be written as N equals D times Q for some integer Q. Now let me remind you that both n and q can be any integer, meaning n and q can be zero, a positive or a negative integer, but d we think of as a positive integer specifically. So on to practice. Does d divide n? We're gonna look at three of these types of questions. Does three divide 6,717? Well, I know the answer to this is yes, because I know the trick. Remember, if you take a large number like 6,717 and you add the digits, six plus seven plus one plus seven, then you get the number 21. If three divides into 21, the smaller number evenly, then you know what divides in the large number evenly. So the answer is yes, but I want you to answer um, with a statement like, three divides in the 6,717 because 6,717 equals three times what? Quickly use your calculator and you'll see that 6,717 equals three times 2,339. So on our next question, does M divide 30K squared plus 25K minus 20? Now, it says that m is 3k plus 4, and since k is an integer, k belongs to the set of integers, I could just write out that k is some integer. I know that m must be an integer as well, and I know that my quadratic expression is also an integer. So I'm still asking you, does one integer divide another? This one's more complicated, let's do scratch work. So the real question on this is, if M divides the quadratic expression, then that means that um, M or 3K plus four is a factor of the quadratic expression. That tells us that what we ought to do is factor. So when I factor this, I notice that there is a GCF of five. So I'm factoring that out as we speak. Now I have a trinomial. I'm gonna think through my AC method. I know that six times negative four is negative 24. And if I rewrite negative 24 as positive eight times negative three, those terms would add to five. So I know that this factors and I need a positive eight and a negative three. And that should do it. Let's check 6 eighths k squared plus 8k minus 3k is 5k minus 4. So now I can say that I've got 3k plus 4 times 5, 2k minus 1. Okay, so this is the same thing as m times. Now, this 5 times 2k minus 1 is an integer. So if m times q actually equals the quadratic expression, then I know that m does divide the quadratic expression. So our last example in this review set is for me to ask you, does five divide 248? Now you know five only divides in the numbers that end in zero or five. So no, it does not divide 248. You do know five would go into 245. That means it goes into 248 with a remainder of three. Let's talk more about these. When five does not divide 248, it helps us transition into our first new topic, which is the quotient remainder theorem. The quotient remainder theorem simply says, 
If you are going to divide any integer, remember n can be zero, positive or negative, by a positive integer d, then you'll either get that n equals qd, where the remainder is zero. This is the case where d divides n, or you get the case where n equals qd plus r. This is where d does not divide n. Now, r is our remainder. A few things for you to know. If D does not divide in, then R will be a positive integer, and it must always be less than what you're dividing by. So R will always be less than D. So we've already mentioned that five does not divide 248. And we said it's because 248 would actually equal 245, which five divides, plus three. So uh, 245 is the five times the 49 plus the three. So does two divide 21? You know it doesn't. Evens don't divide odds. You also know that the remainder is one. So this must be that 21 equals 20 plus one. And of course, 20 is two times 10. Now does seven divide negative 39? Wow, these that get a little trickier when you're dividing into a negative. Let's do scratch work. Now, seven does not divide negative 39. You know that because you know seven goes into 35 and then 42, meaning it goes into negative 35 and negative 42. So we don't um, have that 39 is a multiple of seven. So when we write this, a lot of people's first reaction is to think about 35 and then say, okay, well, let's make this negative 35 plus. The problem is that if I say negative 35 plus, to get negative 39, I have to add a negative four. All right? But the remainder must be positive. So you're on the right track, but you don't have it in the right format. So I mentioned that seven divides into 35 and 42. So we're gonna to go to 42 instead, negative 42 specifically. So what do I add to negative 42 to get 39? Three. Now I'm doing a good job because my remainder is positive and less than what I'm dividing by, it's less than seven. And I know, of course, that negative 42 is seven times negative six. So our first attempt wasn't right, but our second attempt is right. And the second attempt also tells us that the way to do this is to pick when you're working with a negative n value, then think about a number that's to the left of n on the number line. That means when you get to the next problem, I know that 10 does not divide 36, 13 or negative 36, 13. I know that 10 only divides numbers that end in zero. I know that I need a remainder here that's from one to nine, somewhere less than 10. So I'm thinking for negative 36, 13, I'm thinking negative 36, 10 and negative 36, 20 are nearby and 10 goes into those but I want the one that's to, le to the left of negative 36, 13 on the number line. So I choose negative 36, 20, and I notice that if I add seven, then that'll make it work out. And so my Q value is that 10 times negative 362 will equal that negative 3,620. So last but not least on our review slide, does 17 divide 14? Obviously not. You may be asking, why are you even trying to take 17 into 14? Because 17 is larger than 14. But remember that 17 times zero is an option because the N and the Q can both be zero, positive, or negative integers. So when I say 17 times zero plus 14, that does in fact equal 14.